48. Plotting inequalities. Now, we were able to plot inequalities with one variable. Um, so, when it says to plot, um, when we're talking about one variable, we're going to talk about the reason that I'm just saying one variable is because next week we're going to talk about two variables. But I thought we'll start with variables. So, essentially, um, yeah, these, this plot is going to be, this um, topic is going to be about inequalities and linear programming. Inequalities is essentially what we're talking about here. Now, there are different ways that we can plot inequalities, and that's what we're going to be essentially trying to cover in this topic at the start. The other advantage is, is that plotting inequalities is so is super duper strongly linked to um, linear graphs. Essentially, it is a linear graph. So that's going to be our goal. Okay, so let's go have a look at the facts for today. Today's fact, I love this fact. That's why I thought I'd go through. 48 and 75 are betrothed numbers. Now, I'm not going to go through this as I would normally do in class. But um, yeah, 48 and 75 are betrothed numbers. And that means betrothed, if you've never heard of a word before, which actually for some of you guys, I would not imagine you guys ever heard of a word. Even myself as a native English speaker, I think I only heard this word used like once or twice. Um, yeah, betrothed means that they're married or usually to be more specific, it means I think they're promised to be married. Um, but yeah, betrothed is like, you know, they're person that they have to be with. And there are betrothed numbers, which are like married numbers. It's 48 and 75 happen to be betrothed numbers. You're like, well, why are these numbers betrothed? Are all numbers betrothed? No. Most numbers are single and living it up um, free, you know, um, going around. Yeah, it's the Game of Thrones kind of thing is, is very, very true. Um, so why are these betrothed numbers? So there's an interesting fact with 48. If you look at the factors of 48, and I'm not going to, normally I would write them down, but of course I don't have my pad. The factors of 48 happen to be 1, 2, 4, um, we'll go with 6 probably. I don't know, I'm just guessing here. Yeah, 6, um, 8, 12 and then then there's like yeah and no not 12 yeah no 12 um because 12 fours are 12 fours are 48 so then you would go you what you do is you list all of them so then there would be 24 um and then yeah and eight is going to be linked with six so yeah that's going to work um and then what you would do is you would add all these factors together the cool thing about it is if you add all the factors together, you actually equal 75. It's like, yeah, so what? You can add factors. That's not a big deal. But the cool part is, is if you add up the factors of 75, which uh, there's not many of them. There's 1, 3, 25. Um, I think there's like maybe 6 and 15 go into that as well. You actually get to 48. So the factors of 48 add to 75. The factors and if you're really nerdy, you can buy yourself a little, you know, heart with two betrothed numbers on them. Um, so yeah, as a betrothed means promise to someone, it's like a fiance or someone you promise to marry. All factors of 48 add to 75 and all factors of 75 add to 48, except don't add the one. Amicable numbers, uh, when you do add the one, so it's amicable numbers are pretty much the same. Amicable means when you're sort of friends with someone, but you know, you're not really friends with them. It's kind of weird. I like amicable. It's an interesting word. Usually you use the word amicable when you don't like someone, but you've still got to be nice to them, like, you know, your boss or something. All right, let's get back to the actual lesson. So plotting inequalities, we will be able to plot inequalities with one variable. 
What does that mean? What is an inequality? Let's just get some basics down today. Okay. I'm going to try and remind myself. We've only got 20 minutes left. So let's do some of the stuff. I won't go through everything. So vocabulary. Let's go through the vocabulary. Inequalities is a term used to describe the range of values that a variable can be. So a variable can be any of these values. So it could be, you know, it could be two, four, six. It could be any number bigger than this, any number smaller than this. And that's what the inequality is used for, is to say, well, what are the, what are the ranges that we can be in? What they do is they use these four symbols. The four symbols are less than, less than or equal to. So if I say less than seven, that means I could be one, two, three, four, five, six. If I say less than or equal to seven, I could be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. These, those are the numbers that I can be. More than or more than or more than or equal to is the same sort of thing. More than nine is one, two, three, four, uh, is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. More than or equal to nine is nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So just get this little bit copied down and then we're going to go through a little bit more but not much more than this i'm going to use this time to eat some toast Whoa, shit. Sorry. Okay. Now. There is, of course, an easier way to remember these things. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I know that it's a primary school thing, but I still goddamn use it. So that's why I'm going to go back over it. It's the hungry, hungry crocodile, and the hungry alligator. And the hungry alligator always eats the larger number. So if you've got 67, and you've got 76, 76 is bigger than 67. So the hungry caterpillar is going to go with its jaws open. That's hungry caterpillar. Hungry alligator is going to have his jaws open towards the 76. Now, what that helps me do is it helps me realize very quickly when I look at these types of questions, it helps me realize okay, X must be smaller than because the hungry caterpillar is eat, trying to eat the bigger number. So, therefore, or if X is larger than, I mean, the hungry alligator is trying to eat X. So, therefore, whatever is on the other side has to be smaller than it. As I said, I know this is a primary school thing, but trust me, I still use it. So I'd strongly suggest whatever method you use to remember how these uh, inequalities work, I would suggest you do it. Mm. Now, usually maths teachers avoid inequalities. We sort of, um, whenever we talk about maths, a lot of time maths teachers sort of say, oh yeah, you could have this, this part here is the greater than greater than zero. Yeah, but just ignore that. And that's because it's like, well, if there's a whole branch of maths dedicated to it. So we've got to be careful here. So what's the next idea with regards to this? So now we've talked about the vocabulary. We've talked about a hungry alligator. Let's do a quick example. I just, you know, um, at just how you would do, at just what the basics is, okay. Uh, that tree is at least 2.3 meters tall. It will never fit through the door. Now, this is actually not a proper question, but it's just a statement. This tree is at least 2.3 meters tall. Now, 
here's the key word here. This tree is at least 2.5 meters tall. Now, when I say when something says is at least, what you're saying is that it is, you know, the smallest possible thing it could be is 2.3 meters, but it's probably more than 2.3 meters. So how you go about writing this is you say, well, x, right? First thing I would do is I write x and then I write 2.3. Now, the question here says, The tree is at least 2.3 meters. It will never fit through the door. So that means that X is more than 2. Point, is, is either 2.3 meters or more than. So if I was the hungry alligator, I'm going to eat a bigger number. In this case, X is more than 2.3. So the hungry alligator is going to be this way with its jaws open towards the X. You can, the other way I think I've heard this from remembering it is remember that Oh, the, it points to the smaller number. It's like, yeah, sure, whatever, it works for you guys. But the question here is, is, is at least, now the least part means it's not, it could be 2.3 meters, right? It was to, if the question was the tree is more than 2.3, then this would be, would be done. But because this is at least, I'm going to add this line underneath. That line means that X can be 2.3 meters or more than. So all I need to do to work this example out was write down the two values, X and 2.3, figure out which one is bigger. In this case, the tree is bigger than 2.3 meters because this is at least. If it was at most, then it would be the other way around. And then because this is least, I know that it could be 2.3. So that's how you would do that's not really a question, I know, but it's at least changing a worded statement into an inequality. And that's something that's pretty important. Okay, I'm going to move on now. So, I think, um, whoa, okay, we're going to stop at that point there. I'm not going to do this bit here. I'm just going to, yeah, I mean, we could do it, but you know what, let's not. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to represent an equation. We're going to represent, uh, representing linear equalities. Um, so what we want to do, oh, I don't think I've, uh, I'll jump into trying to teach you something that I haven't actually properly taught, but I'll explain it in a sec. So, um when you do so this question here five x plus one must be greater than what the okay five x plus one must be greater than or equal to 16. okay what that does is that says that's an equation okay 16 is going to be somewhere in our thing but this is not, um, sorry, forgive me, uh, it's been a while since I've done these things. These things are a little bit more tricky, okay? Now, that doesn't tell us what x can be. That just tells us what the result of 5x plus 1 has to be. So how can we use this information to, to backtrack and find out what x needs to be? So to do that, what we would do is we'd start off by, I'm going to minus one from each side of this, this inequality. Now the power of inequalities is you can do, I'm going to try and do this, you know, with this stupid marker with my trackpad because I can't quickly find my mouse. We are going to subtract one from both sides. Now the power of inequalities is, it doesn't matter if we subtract one from each side. Okay. The reason is, is to think about it. If two, if X is more than two, 
if x plus 1 is more than 2, then that means that, you know, if x plus 1 is more than 2, then that would imply that x is more than 1, because if I add 1 to it, if I subtract 1 from both sides, it's not going to change it. What that's going to do is that's going to give us the equation. Oopsies. That's going to give us the equation 5x. Man, this is really hard. I just found a mouse, but there's no verb. Is greater than or equal to 15. Okay, well, let's do the same thing. If if I have a number and I multiply it by 5, it has to be more than 15. But that number on its own has to be, well, if I divide both sides by 15, if I divide both sides by 15, no, by 5, sorry. <laughs> if I divide both sides by 5, Oh man, this is so annoying. What we end up with is, we end up with, pardon me, x must be greater than 5. Greater than or equal to 5. And there we go. Now we have it just for x. Now you might be saying to yourself, okay, well, that's sort of okay, but I don't understand how we went from the top down. What I would suggest to you guys to do is to pick two numbers. Let's pick the number zero. Let's pick the number zero, and we'll also pick the number, I don't know, 10. Now we know zero is not greater than five. So therefore this equation shouldn't work. We can actually check. I'm actually not going to write it down because it's going to kill me. But if I go like this, five times zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. One is not greater than 16. It doesn't work. But if I substitute 10, 10 is greater than five. Five times 10 is 50. 50 plus 1 is 51. 51 is greater than 16, so it works. So as long as you choose a number that's either 5 or more, then this equation works. All we had to do is the same logic that we used with linear graphs, which is we simplify this till we, we, we simplify this till we got to x to a value for x. Now once we get to a value of x, we should probably plot this. What we need to do is we need to find the value of 5, which is over here. I'm going to do a circle for that. Uh, the idea is x must be greater than 5. So that means I'm going to draw a line that points upwards from 5. All of these values upwards from 5 can count. So x can be 6, x can be 7, x can be 8, x can be 9, x can be 10, x can be 11. It can't be 4. You can even try 4. Um, you could even... Uh, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Guys, why didn't anyone tell me in chat that 15 divided by 5 is not 5? 15 divided by 5 is... Three. God damn it. God damn it. That means that X can be four. I bet that someone just wrote in chat. I bet someone was like, I knew that, but I thought that, you know, you made it. Yeah, disappointed, Emily. No, I'm not disappointed. I'm more disappointed in myself for <laughs> getting that wrong. Um, so x can be 4 because 4 times 5 is 20 plus 1 is 21. x can be 3. 3 times 5 is 15 plus 1 is 16. Um, yeah, it's a teaching moment. I love it. Um, that's what all mistakes are. 
the teachers. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to make the teaching moment. I'm not. I'm not that full of myself. I make mistakes. I am like I like to pretend that I'm good at maths, but you know, I know maths. I'm a massive nerd, but I still make silly mistakes, arithmetic mistakes. You know, it's part of being human. That's why you always should be double checking your answers. That's the only reason why. Um, just getting a bit philosophical. That's the only reason why I'm actually relatively good at maths. I'm always checking my answers. Now, this last little bit here is this. And that's what the reason I found it was because I thought, well, let's, let me just teach this. I put four into this equation. Oh, shit, it works. And I'm like, oh, no, I've made a mistake. Now, because this includes three, X is greater than or equal to three, we actually need to do something. What we need to do is we need to color in this circle. And then I'm going to try and do this on the um, old computer because it could be three. Now, if there was no chance that it could be three, we would just leave that circle open. But because it could be three, we need to make sure that circle's closed. This gives you guys the inequality for this equation, this line. So let's run through the steps that we've done here. First, what we did was we um, solved the equation. We transposed the equation. If you remember back in term two, that's what we called it. We transposed this equation to solve for x. Once we got a solution for x, we then plotted that solution for x on this line. We used a solid circle because it could be three. And also the arrow points upwards because it can be any number greater than three, any number more than three. And you can always double check a linear inequality by substituting some random values in and seeing if those random values work. So you can substitute zero in, and you can even substitute two in. Two times x is 10 plus one is 11. 11 is not more than 16, so you can straight up see it doesn't work. So it's always good to just substitute some random values in to see if it works. Guys, we've run out of time for today, which is pretty good. I'm happy with where we finished up today. What we're going to do probably on Tuesday is some plotting in two dimensions.